Hey everybody, how we doing today? So welcome to Chumming 101 number two, where I am going to let you in on a little secret. Uh, this will probably be the most impactful tip that I'm going to give on my entire channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the correct technique for chumming for yellowtails on our Florida Keys Reef. Now, one thing to understand, the yellowtail snapper is probably one of our premier sports fish that we have here in the Florida Keys. It's super tasty. You'll find it as the feature fish in most of our seafood restaurants down here. It's a sustainable fish. Uh, it's a hard fighting fish. It's a beautiful, gorgeous looking fish. And uh, it's just so well rounded and it's, it's a, you have the ability by all range of anglers to be able to catch it. But here lies the issue. Uh, the requirements to catching them comes down to a certain technique that is not widely utilized throughout the United States and the world. It's kind of unique to the Keys. And that is anchoring and chumming for yellowtails and slash reef fish. And that's what I'm gonna be discussing today. Now, if you're uh, just starting to learn the Florida Keys fishery, or even if you're just preparing for your first trip, that general response is kind of the majority of the time of what you're gonna hear. Yeah, just go out to the reef, anchor up, get a frozen block of chum, throw it in a chum net, stick out in the water, and then just drift back little chunks of bait, and just reel them in, fill in, and you fill up your cooler, and that's all there is to it. Okay, even the professional TV shows that I watch, because I'm very much into what they're saying and kind of analyzing that, and that's kind of what they do too. They do it to a larger range, but that's kind of the, the tips that they give. However, when I watch them, I see what they're doing, and they definitely do not go into detail all of the, the stuff that they're doing, because I see the components that they're using, and I see the stuff that they're not showing or explaining, okay? And it's actually truth to uh, even YouTube with all the, the how-to videos. It's very spotting and it's very surprising. There's, there's very little bit of information. There's bits and bobs here and there, but nothing really that kind of goes into the detail. Actually, how the more professional, the more veteran uh, reef fishermen actually do it. So I felt it was very important to kind of get that information out. All right, so this is the way it's gonna work. In today's video, I'm just gonna do an overview. Just kind of give you just the, the full perspective run through it, okay? I'm not gonna go into detail in all the different components because it's actually very technical and this ought to be a big relief to probably the majority of the fishermen that have come down to the Keys and got that basic instructions, went out to the reef, and to be honest, like I said, majority probably were not successful. Yeah, there's going to be that lucky percentage that it's just everything lines up for them and they just have the greatest experience and they go thinking, man, I should just go home, quit my job, move the keys and be a commercial yellowtail fisherman because it's just so easy. I could just, I'll, I'll be rich. <laughs> but like I said, the majority of the people that have come down here and tried have not been very successful okay but you're hopefully going to feel a little bit more at ease when you find out all the different components involved to doing it correctly and to really improve your odds but it's going to be important for me to kind of break this up so today just an overview so you can kind of hear the things that you're going to be looking at and then in future videos i'm going to break out each one of those components in a separate video because it is that important also, at the end of the video, I'm going to go through the theory part of this technique to understand the why each one of these components is important. Um, one thing I learned when I was kind of learning the, the commercial side of the fishing down here, my captain was very good at explaining and expecting me to understand more than just doing something. He wanted me to be able to understand and explain why I'm doing that. So it wasn't a matter of, okay, just do that, all right, then do that, and then do that, and that was it. No, he would say, okay, do that, and then he would say, now explain to me why you're doing that. What What is the meaning for that? Okay, and I have to kind of like think. And then that caused me to, every time he taught me something new, is I'm automatically thinking about 
why that is important and how that is affected by this and how they affect each other. So when I'm giving these tips out, it's very important for you to just get more beyond just doing the same thing I'm doing. Just don't mirror what I'm doing, but understand, and that's why I, I take a lot of time is to explain the back side of it, the theoretical side of it, on the, the why I'm doing it, why it's important, how it affects other things, okay? So that part of it at the end of this video will probably be very helpful in re understanding how all of these components will make you more successful. All right, let's get started here. Um, now, the first step, of course, is finding the fish, and that's basically going to go out there, uh, use your fish finder, or sometimes it's good to send somebody over the side in snorkel gear, and basically look for schools of fish down on the bottom. Yellowtails are schooling fish, so they if you put in the time, you can generally find some sort of pocket of fish somewhere. Uh, the other option is to find areas that you think will hold fish, looking for structure, okay? So looking for the edge of the reef, drop-offs, uh, the patch reefs, some coral heads, just structure that you think you're gonna, that will hold fish. Then you're gonna go move upstream from those targeted areas and drop anchor, okay? Now this is where the chumming starts. Okay, there's basically three core steps involved with this. Now, like I said, the one that everybody is gonna throw at you in the beginning is basically get your frozen block of chum, okay? I will be doing a video about the different types of chum and how to kind of distinguish between them and then put it in your chum net and I'll be doing a separate video about the different chum nets, the different mesh uh, hole sizes, uh, the flow rates, which ones I recommend for what situations, okay? And hang that over the side. Now the key thing to this is that you want to get that chum flowing and that scent in the water and start attracting those fish as soon as possible. So in general, if you're on a, a full size boat and you got three or four people, you got one person driving the boat, you got one person getting ready to put the anchor out. As those guys are getting ready to do that, okay, they're dropping the anchor, have that third person getting those uh, chum blocks out of the uh, cardboard into that chum net and over the side, okay? You don't have to wait until you're stopped and everything's all locked up. Have somebody get that out there because you want that scent flowing in that current as soon as possible, all right? So that's the stage one. And we're trying to catch those guys, which I don't think is gonna be very difficult. <laughs> we can use our hands for that. Yeah. That's our target species, yellowtail snapper. So that's what I was talking about, the importance of chum and making things a lot easier and getting them feeding. Step number two is chum balls. Now, I will we'll be doing a separate video about how to make those, but chum balls basically are allow you to get that chum descended down into the lower water column. Now it's actually kind of a misnomer. A lot of people think that when you chum ball, you're doing it to target the uh, groupers and the muttons, the bottom reef fish there. And yes, that's partially true, but also what you're doing is you're creating a cookie line, all right? So the way that works is as soon as you drop that chum uh, off into the water, it starts breaking apart and as it starts dropping in the water column in the current, it leaves trail of scent and bits and pieces of chum as well. Then as it gets to the bottom, yeah, those yellowtails and other fish might attack it and break it up, but then they're gonna start following those bits and pieces that are still there up that water column. And what that's gonna do is gonna get them to your main chum line that you're doing from your net where the bulk of your chum is flowing. Chum doesn't have a lot of weight, so it tends to just flow with the current in the upper water column, and it takes a long distance before it gets down deeper in the water column, and that's where those chum balls come into play to get those fish that are on the bottom up to your main chum line, and then when they're there, then that's where the main bits and batch of foods are, and they'll tend to hang out there, and that's where you can target them. Also, I'll be doing a video about using a chum ball to uh, putting a bait inside one 
and dropping that down in order to target those muttons and groupers and those bottom fish. I shouldn't say I one of the issues with using chum balls is that one of the main ingredients is sand. Now sand can be harmful to the reef, which we all know is in dire need of help. So we definitely don't want to hurt the, the, the reef. However, uh, in that future video when I go over how to make these chum balls, I will also include how and where to use the, the sand balls in particular, okay? I'll also have a matrix where it'll tell you like at certain depths and certain currents which ones you need, which ones you don't need it, okay? As well as alternatives to the sand so that you can get the same results and not have to worry about your affecting the liveliness of the reef. So that will be on that same how to make sand balls uh, video there. Number three, we've got yellowtail slop. Now, yellowtail slop is basically a block of defrosted chum, so it's just all loosened up there, rolled oats, and some seawater, okay, and uh, mixed up into consistency of soup. All right, and I will be having a video specifically about how to make it, okay? Those are the core ingredients. Now, what yellowtail slop is, is to be used in conjunction with the other two. Uh, you've put out your main chum block and it's flowing out behind your boat. You've dropped the chum balls down and you've tracted those yellowtails up and now they're in the back of your boat, okay? Now, one thing you always need to remember, and I kind of bring this up a lot, is in the Keys, we tend to have very clear water and our fish around here can really see. So sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they could be very line shy. So you have to be kind of careful. Sometimes you could have the yellow brick, brick road behind you where that's just a massive school of yellowtails and they're eating up the chum, but you try to drift the bait back in there and then you just see them just kind of parting ways with your line and your bait because they could see it, all right? So that's where the yellowtail slot comes in. It's there to camouflage your bait and your fishing line, okay? So as you got those the, the fish behind you, you get somebody throw out a couple of scoops of that yellowtail slop, and what it does is it instantly milks up the water. It creates a, a cloud, a chum cloud, okay? So it still has the attractiveness of that scent and the bits and pieces of the chum. The, uh, the oats create volume with scent, so they're eating that as well. And then you have somebody throw their bait into the middle of that chum cloud and just keep their bait floating right along with that cloud in the current and it's camouflage and then you have a better chance that those fish are not going to see that bait in your line and then they're going to grab the bait and boom you're hooked up and you're bringing them in so that's the key component for the yellowtail slop now on one side it's probably for the recreational fishermen the least of importance um, the other two are definite requirements the yellowtail slop is kind of an optional but then on the flip side, on the commercial guys, the ones that are catching tons of yellowtails, not just uh, five or 10 here, they want tonnage, okay? They primarily use that chum slop in regards to when you go on a commercial chum boat, um, yellowtail boat, you'll see behind their boat is just a clouded mess of, of just like milk, okay? And what they're doing is they're just consistently milking up that water with that yellowtail slop and they don't need to use a fishing rod and reel because it's not efficient. They'll have just an old cane pole with a line off of it and a hook, and they'll be able to put a bait on it, just drop it into the cloud, and just flick a bait, uh, flick the yellowtail back in the boat, put the line back out, and just boom, 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 okay? And by just keeping that cloud, it keeps that uh, school right up to where they're at. It keeps them just eating without any fear and then they can just reel them in. So it's two ways to look at the importance of that yellowtail slop. And finally, I'm just going to kind of go through an overview of everything all together. Uh, I went into more detail than I originally planned for each section, but uh, this will kind of help people to kind of get their mind around the whole package all at once. So we'll do that here real quick. All right, let's kind of go through this all in one motion here. So. 
you head out to the reef, uh, you're looking for schools of fish or possibly just structure that you think will be holding fish. You find that. So you go up current, drop anchor, and you're ready to go. All right. So from there, you have somebody put out a chum bag and get that chum flowing. Now, one thing you have to remember that there's always current. So as you're putting that chum in the water, depending on the current, will determine how fast that chum falls. And sometimes the current can rip pretty good and it could take a while for that chum to finally get down into the water column. All right. So depending on where you anchor up, how far away from that fish and structure you are, uh, will determine if your chum actually reaches them. A lot of times, people don't realize that chum is very light and it'll take a long time for that chum to get down to the depths where these fish are at, especially when you're talking 70 feet to 100 feet on the outer edge of the reef or 30 to 40 feet on top of the reef. All right, so from there, uh, you maybe start try throwing a line out and you're drifting your bait back right into this chum line and you're really not having any luck. And you're like, well, I'm doing what everybody says, but I'm not catching anything. A lot of has to do with is those fish are down here, your chum's up here, and they don't even know that it's up there. Okay, even the scent is not getting down to them. Now, so here comes our step two, and then we have our chum balls, okay? And we start dropping that chum ball down, and it kind of goes back in the current as well, okay? So we've got our chum ball here, and the whole time it's breaking up and leaving little morsels all the way up, okay? It's kind of flowing in the current that way. So what happens there is, these fish, yeah, they, they converge on this chum block here and they start attacking it and they start feeding on that, okay? But then what happens is they say like, ooh, there's more over here and they start following those chim, chum bits up and then they run into your chum slick. And then all of a sudden these fish start moving up and they get in that chum slick and they're, at that point, you have what's called the yellow brick road. All these fish move up into your chum slick, and now you're in a great opportunity there. Then that line that you've thrown out is starting to get some action, okay? Because you're drifting back, and those fish are there, and you're starting to hook up a bit. But let's say they start becoming line shy, and, or they start getting smart, and it gets harder to catch, or maybe they start out that way. You see all those fish in your chum line, you know they're there, but they're just not biting, okay? That's when the, uh, the yelltail slop comes in. And then that yelltail slop creates kind of a cloud here. Okay, and it covers up that chum. It's just very milky. And what that does is that camouflages your line and your bait. So as these fish are feeding, they really can't see what's different anymore because it's a bit milky there. And there's a better chance that you're going to hook up. So that's the gist of what we're looking to do when we're doing these three steps. You're, you're, you're getting that standard chum line up, but then you're using that chum, uh, the chum balls to get those fish not only to feed on the bottom, but to get them to feed that line up to where your chum is. And then you're gonna use that chum slop, yellow tail slop to camouflage and increase your bites there. So in general, that's kind of what we're looking at in this process versus you coming out with just your chum bag, putting out that chum, even though the fish are here, they don't even realize that that chum is there and that's why you kind of miss out on the whole thing. All right, so that is Chumming 101 number two, Yellowtail Secrets. Uh, hopefully that you found it helpful. Uh, more importantly, for those people that have tried the old, ah, uh, just go out there with a block of chum, a chum net, throw it in the water, drift the bait back, reel in that yellowtail, throw it in the cooler, and you're all set for the day. It's no problem. And uh, you go out there and uh, you found it very challenging. 
hopefully this video shows that it can be quite technical and there's a lot of pieces involved in regards to actually being very successful at it. Um, don't forget that I will have very precise videos specifically about each one of these components because it can be, like I said, very technical. Um, also, this video is sponsored by allaboutthebait.com. Okay, uh, I'm waist deep into it uh, because it is a very Florida Keys type of fishery, Florida Keys style technique. So uh, I invested into it a lot. Uh, you can see I've got the All About the Bait uh, Yellowtail shirt featuring the Yellowtail jigs, which also I sell. I've also got the uh, If You Chum They Will Come Yellowtail shirt, as well as If You Chum They Will Come Chum sticker, which you probably won't see a chum sticker very often. Uh, I sell the weighted circle hooks as well. And on top of that, I've got about uh, over a dozen chum bags, chum rings, chum cages. So for all your chumming needs, uh, check out allaboutthebait.com. But anyways, hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, keep an eye out for more chumming videos. And uh, I'll see you next video. Bye.